Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So uh, the last place I left up uh, off on the uh, lathe here was that I was showing um, some of the tooling I got and thanking some um, different folks for some help. I really appreciate it. Now I'm getting pretty close, I think, to uh, maybe making some chips. There's just a couple more things that I want to go through and make sure that they're clean and don't have uh, you know chips embedded in them and and that uh, everything looks like it's functioning okay. Um, and that is the the gear or lead screw forward reverse lever box here and then I want to take the carriage off so I can look under it and look at the apron and that sort of stuff so that's uh, that's what we're gonna start with so when I come back I'm gonna position myself down at the other end of the uh, lead screw and, and we'll start there I moved the uh, carriage down toward the end of the lead screw so that it provides some support when I undo the bearing there at the end I do want to say this, this nut was incredibly stiff, I guess, to get off. So what I ended up doing, and this might be a no-no, so if you need to uh, correct me and say this is a bad thing, I took a pair of channel locks and a piece of uh, heavy sandpaper and I wrapped this around the lead screw just so that I can get a, a, a good grip on it to get this nut loose. So this nut's been broke loose. So we're going to go ahead and take this off so we have a nut. And it looks like a washer. And then there are two 7 16 inch bolts here. So let's see what have I got here. So I've got a 7 16 inch socket. Let's see if we can break those. That come loose pretty easy. And that one did too. All right, so let's uh, pull these two screws out. And then the bearing should just slide off. Looks like it does. There's another washer on the back side of that. And then we have the lead screw. It looks like there's a, a washer there too. Yeah, so let me see if I can rotate this and figure out how that's stuck on there. Or if it's just stuck on there. Interestingly enough, there's a keyway cut in the shaft. I'm not seeing anything that has a key. So I'm not sure why. Can somebody tell me why that keyway is in the shaft? All right, so... Um, this looks like it should come off, but I'm not sure. All right, so look, I'm going to take off the threading dial to get it out of the way. Okay, and then uh, the half nuts are already open, so I should be. Let me back this up a little bit, maybe, and see what's going on. I should be able to pull this out of the. Uh, out of the uh, gear change uh, or the reversing lever box at the other end. So let me back it up and a little bit so you can maybe see what I'm trying to do and go from there. Okay, I backed the camera out enough here so maybe you can see. Let me uh, slide my piece of wood to protect my ways back just a little bit. So I should be able to slide this lead screw out and it looks like it come right out and this come out of the gear change lever. So I want to go ahead and gingerly pull my lead screw out so it's out you set it off to the side down here okay and then uh, I should be able to just um, crank the let me make sure you're in frame Okay, I should be able to just, uh, I, I guess, just crank this right off the end, the saddle and the uh, apron. All right, so I've run out of rack, and I know there's a gib up under there somewhere. All right, and yep, there's the gib. All right, we'll set this offside, and we'll come back to this.
Okay, so uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, get in position where we can take off this uh, this uh, direction lever box. Let me uh, move the camera in position and uh, uh, we'll start that. So hopefully that's a good enough view to see what's going on. So to remove this box, uh, this gear shift box, uh, there's two bolts up here, I think they're half inch that uh, either clamp it or screw it to the bedway. So let me take those out. Alright, there's the first one. And this one I probably can't get all the way out because it uh, will interfere with the casting. But at least we'll loosen it, loosen it and see if we can uh, get this to slide when we're ready for it. Okay, I'm going to come around to the other side here to the uh, banjo and gear train. The gear train here, uh, the banjo I think has to be removed. So these are 11 16 nuts. We'll take off these gears. Maybe I'm going down to taking these too far down. I've loosened these up obviously. That's not going to come out. Let's set this off to the side. And then I believe this is three quarters. Excuse me. So let's loosen the banjo up here. Matter of fact, I think this has to come out, so we'll go ahead and um, remove this. Boy, it's a very thin head on that. I guess it has to be to clear the, the gear. And hopefully I'm not making a fool of myself here. So. Interesting. Looks like that's just part of it. I think I can leave that there. And then finally we have this gear here. And uh, I'm going to get lucky. Alright, so take the lead screw gear off here. Okay, here's a Woodruff key. We don't want to lose that. And that was the uh, pulley bushing. It goes in the back. I'll we'll set all these bits right here. And looks like a heavy washer in the very back. And then I'm guessing that the banjo, yeah, the banjo will just slide off. Alright, so the banjo is loose. And, oh, that's just a nut and a bolt there on the back. Interesting, okay. Set that over there out of the way. Okay, so looks like looks like I'm gonna have to Yeah, that is threaded in there. So I'm gonna have to take this out. Made for guys with big fingers. I guess I could have taken this little guard off too. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? It's attached to the guard. So let me uh, let me take that off real quick. Matter of fact, I have to uh, gather some tools, so I will be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this guard off. There's a screw on this side, and hopefully, I'm not uh, blocking. And that's forked. Okay, and then there's a set. Or there's an Allen head cap screw down here, holding it to the box. Okay, so it's off. Let me set it aside. All right, so this should just come off, and it does. It looks like a little paint or something come with it. Let's take a look in there, and let's look at our gears. Well, that's good. I'm not seeing any broken teeth, and spider looks okay. All right, so um, let me reposition the camera and get this set up on my board, and we'll take a closer look at it. Okay, so here's the uh, reversing gear assembly, and it looks like uh, it's got a lot of wear. It's a lot of uh, slop in it. Not sure. I'm going to look at the uh, parts diagram and kind of see what we got going on. But uh, you'll see that there's uh, three beveled gears, and then there's a little spider in here that allows it to switch back and forth. Although it seems like there should be something in there that allows it to switch, and I think it's actually the uh, the lead screw slides through there, and then this slides on the lead screw. So this is uh, I think what we got going on here. So anyway, let's see, how does how would this come apart? It looks like, uh, of course, this one here just was on the lead screw, so that one's okay. And let's see here, it looks like we have a screw for the handle and a big nut up here at the top. And then this part here looks like it would probably slide out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this with a little luck. All right, so far so good. Let's screw out of the handle. And hopefully everything's still in frame here. Set that to the side. Okay, the handle should just slide off and it does. It's a broached square in there. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to spin this around and spin that out. Yep, it's a little gummed up. And of course there's the, the spider. Now these tangs uh, look a little, little, little worn down, but it'll work with what we got here. Okay, that's got a big screw thread on it, and a nut over here. Now let's see if that's one of the world famous 1116s nuts. It is. Okay, that's going to spin. Yep. So I need to um, need to find. Uh, big enough screwdriver to stick in there to let me get this make sure it's in frame to stick in here and um, hold this and then I'll uh, take the rest of it apart off off camera and clean it up and then we'll look at the bits before we put it back together so anyway so not, not to waste too much of your time there let's uh, get that cleaned up and we'll come right back okay guys I'm back and I've cleaned all this stuff up and uh, I want to spend a few minutes uh, really covering uh these these bits and pieces uh look i i've always um appreciated how mr pete uh 222 or tubal cane or uh, mr peterson has always taken the time to uh, show how these uh, uh pieces go together and um and interact with one another so i thought uh since i've never seen him show this type of reversing um mechanism that you know he's got the quick change uh um gearbox and the reversing tumblers on the side of the head on on his lays I thought maybe I'd really take a minute to show how this thing's constructed so the main body of the casting is a uh, Zamac casting um, and one thing to notice that on the top see if I can find something to point with here on the top there are three oil holes there's one here one here and one here now these Two of the three of these were pretty plugged, which would probably explain for a lot of the wear that I have, and there's a lot of wear. Um, this uh, 
this oil hole here comes straight down through and 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 exits right here okay this oiler here um, comes through the casting and then you and I, don't know, I don't know if the video will pick it up but you know there's a bushing here with an oil groove um, that's been cut into it and then there's an oil hole here this one was completely plugged I have really had to take a little a wire and really poke it out to get it cleaned out um, which would probably explain for the excessive wear that we got in here or at least part of it right and then finally the third one here this one comes down and comes through here to uh, lubricate uh, this last bevel gear so let's talk about how this goes together okay uh, on the machine uh, the, the unit sits like this here the banjo uh, attaches uh, to this end and it pivots on this side right here so there's really kind of only one way it can go together we start out with the this is the banjo side and there's something else I'll point out and it's it's just busted all to pieces there's a little fiber washer I'm gonna have to see if I can find some some new ones of these I'll maybe get a hold of Clausing and see if they got them or if that's something that you could just buy or make so if somebody out there knows uh, let me know they're uh, fairly thin I haven't mic'd them or anything uh, to know how thick they are but this one here is a new message standing by sorry about that um, this one here is uh, brittle and broken but it uh, it would slide onto here, and then this shaft right here um, s s slides through this bore, and then of course over on this side, you know, there's a, a washer, and then this is where your um, lead screw um, um, gear goes. Okay, so the next one um, is this bevel gear here to put in. This is the um, uh, the idler, I, I call it the idler, uh, sits on top. So this one's kind of uh, funny to get in. Now, I want to point out that there's this uh, little fiber washer here that's got a couple of little ticks knocked out of it, which I would guess would be to fit that little oil hole up there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but I don't know of any real way that you could actually hold that in place to keep it from moving about. So then the bevel washer would slide in here, interlocking with this one here and then we have a pen with a thread on the end that just slides through and then on the other side hopefully I'm keeping this in front on the other side we have a, a flat nut kind of looks like a jam nut to me okay and then um, next we have uh, this is the the reversing fork now this fork um, has a couple little tangs on it and has a spider gear and this moves us back and forth um, to engage into either this bevel gear or this other bevel gear and if we look at the end of the bevel gears you see that there's little notches there where these will fit down in there and make a positive so I'm sorry about my phone it's blowing up today so um, now the pins on this little reversing fork they look pretty worn down to me but having never seen one I don't know how worn they are other than I can see literally see flat spots uh, worn into the into the sides of the, of the pins but anyway this piece here slides through the back and then this is of course is where our handle would attach all right the uh, little spider gear you slides in there and just kind of spin that around um, like so to get it in place and then finally the last uh, spider gear just kind of really just sets in there okay so now in operation um, the leads or the uh, gear train is is always driving these right um, and so when we engage it we can see how that engages that way. I'm going to come over here and let's see if I can get that in there and see that changes the direction. So right now you see that it's rotating this way as I uh, spin the lead screw or as I spin the gear and then if I come over to this side I guess I lied to you. 
It's still spinning that way. Hmm. How does it reverse? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, oh, I see what it is. Let me, uh, let me pull this back out and let's take a closer look at this. So you'll see that this spider has a tooth on it. So this, this is what's actually driving the lead screw. Now hopefully I can get the lead screw up here in frame. Uh, a little more maybe. Okay. So here's the end of the lead screw and you'll see that that's keyed to that. Okay. So it's actually this part here that spins the lead screw one way or the other. So let's go back and look at this again just to uh, be clear because I kind of messed that up. All three of these bevel gears just idle or you know they, they all just spin okay but now um, since this is the driving gear um, you'll see that uh, this gear turns in the opposite direction of of this gear okay so when this is locked so now you see the lead screw would turn this way this direction right and then if we go the other way you can see that the lead screw is now turning the opposite direction. So that's that's how that works. Um, so hopefully that's a, a good enough explanation. Um, I'll come back to this when it comes time to actually put it together. I, I'm gonna see if I can find some replacement fiber washers. And this is probably a good time to end this video uh, before I start uh, on the apron and the carriage. So uh, until next time, um, Thanks for watching. If you guys got some suggestions on these uh, fiber washers, where to get them, uh, is it something I can buy from a hardware store, or is that something that I have to order from Klausing, uh, or what, or can can you make them? You know, uh, let me know. So, uh, hey, thanks for all the uh, tips and suggestions and help uh, from the last video, uh, especially to uh, Rich uh, for making something for nothing and to. Uh, uh, Art Eckstein uh, for uh, all of his uh, helpful suggestions and input. So um, I'm going to call this one a, a quit for now so I can uh, get it crunched and posted and and hopefully we can um, find out something about these fiber washers and move forward. So uh, other than that, have a blessed day.